Thank you. Good morning again to everyone. My topic is uh, to talk about ALK inhibition. And uh, as you have heard from the previous speaker, ALK translocation is the hallmark of this disease that uh, is present in uh, five, seven percent of all the adenocarcinoma. And it accounts for approximately for 50,000 new cases each year worldwide, approximately the same number of chronic myelogen leukemia. At the present moment, uh, the scenario that we have uh, is uh, uh, the possibility to utilize two drugs which uh, has got approval either by FDA and EMA, crizotinib and seritinib, and uh, uh, crizotinib has been approved also for ROS1 by FDA, as I mentioned before. Crizotinib has been approved uh, for all the lines of treatment, seritinib after progression of crizotinib. In Japan, alectinib has been approved uh, in all the lines uh, for the Japanese population. Crizotinib has been developed in a classical way through a number of studies, phase one, phase two, and then two randomized phase three. But what is, has been particular is that the first approval by FDA occurred after the first results of the phase one trial that was one of the exceptions in oncology. After this approval, crizotinib has confirmed his activity in uh, phase two uh, pretreated patients and in two randomized trial versus chemotherapy in phase three trial in second and first line. The most uh, relevant data are for changing the clinical practice, which has been published in New England Journal of Medicine, has been uh, uh, performed in this trial comparing crizotinib to cisplatin pemetrexet. As you see, the, in terms of response rate, 74% was the response rate of crizotinib in first line versus 45 for cisplatin pemetrix, which is a high percentage of response for chemotherapy. And the median duration of response was 11 months versus five months. What is not worth is that uh, in ALK translocated patients anyway, approximately 25% of the patients, they do not respond to crizotinib in first line. It is, has uh, opened the, the, the way for finding new treatment because it's a, a large proportion of patients, one of four. In terms of uh, progression-free survival, there was a clearly advantage for crizotinib versus chemotherapy with a reduction of the risk of progression approximately over 50%. And uh, this did not translate in a survival advantage because 70% of the patients in the chemotherapy arm, they cross to crizotinib at the time of the progression. But again, there is the question that also in the chemotherapy arm, 30% of the patients do not receive, do not have the chance to receive crizotinib in first line. And this is very important because they don't have the chance to get the crizotinib anyhow. So it is clear to me that today, and also in Europe this is possible, and hopefully also in Italy in the proximate future, Crizotinib need to be considered the first line of choice for this kind of patients. Well, we have a number of uh, uh, potential new agents that uh, from a theoretical point of view in the cell line uh, experiments, they show better activity than crizotinib at different uh, pharmacokinetics characteristics. And uh, if you remember that 25%, one of four of the patients do not respond to crizotinib in first line, these new drugs could be an option that could improve our results in this disease. 
what are the potential advantages to give these uh, new agents in first line? Well, they have a better enzymatic activity. Second generation seems to be more potent, more powerful than crizotinib. And they are active after crizotinib failure, so they seem to be active in a large number of patients with respect to crizotinib. And uh, mainly because uh, CNS is one of the major failure sites during crizotinib treatment, all these new drug and uh, uh, the most uh, known today are for sure seritinib and alectinib, they seem to cross the blood barrier, the blood brain barrier, and they have a better activity in CNS, and this is very important. The only uh, disadvantage that I uh, found, that I find today in uh, the sequence of treatment is that probably, or maybe, the sequence first crizotinib, then a second agent which is active in crizotinib refractory or progressive patients, could be a strategy that uh, overcome the results of the first agent in front line. But this needs to be evaluated in the clinical practice. We have today a randomized clinical trial which has been closed and uh, it has been performed in Western Europe and in USA comparing alectinib versus crizotinib. Alectinib has been already marketed in Japan on the basis of a similar trial that in uh, Asiatic population has shown a benefit in uh, uh, progression-free survival for alectinib versus crizotinib. The trial has been closed and we are uh, waiting the result for the last year. And this will give us uh, an opportunity to evaluate uh, a new generation uh, ALK inhibitors versus crizotinib in first line. We have experience with another uh, uh, second generation ALK inhibitor, seritinib, in uh, uh, naive patients. And in naive patients, we have a progression free survival with a median of uh, 18.4 months. That is much higher than the 9 10 months that crizotinib has reported in the first line setting. In refractory patients, progressing after crizotinib, the median progression free survival is uh, seven months that need to be added anyway to the 10 months of progression free survival of crizotinib in the sequence strategy. So we have 18 months with seritinib in first line, but 17 months in the combination strategy of crizotinib after seritinib. Seritinib has been uh, uh, evaluated also in a phase three randomized trial versus cisplatin or carboplatin and pemetrexet. is a similar trial to the one that has shown superiority of crizotinib in this setting. But the difference is that uh, in the first trial of crizotinib, there was not maintenance treatment that is present in this arm, so we will, we will evaluate in first line an ALK inhibitors versus the same duration of chemotherapy at least in responding patients. And uh, this trial has completed this accrual and we are waiting the results, I think, for the next years too. At the moment, the uh, strategy that we currently use in our country and in Europe, and I think also in most of the Western world, is a sequential treatment, first line crizotinib, then seritinib, or any way in all the setting, uh, use a second ALK inhibitors after progression of crizotinib. And uh, uh, you see that the, uh, the progression-free survival with this sequence is approaching the 18 months, that is the progression-free survival of seritinib in first line in naive patients. If we look the EC50 
of all the uh, ALK inhibitors that we know, you see that uh, in uh, the native uh, ALK inversion, all the new second generation compounds seems to be more active than crizotinib. Is 50 is for some of them half that what is necessary to crizotinib. And uh, the uh, second generation has shown a very good activity also in crizotinib refractory patients with a response rate approaching 50% or 71% and the progression free survival that is overcoming 10 months. This is our experience in our department in Perugia. We have treated roughly 70 patients. Most of them, they were heavily pretreated. 17% received more than three lines of chemotherapy, but most of them received at least two lines of chemotherapy. And we divided this in a number of patients. Patients still on the first line TKI without evidence of progression. So patients that are long responders to crizotinib. Patients that are still on the first line of crizotinib after an oligo progression. And this is the majority of our patients. Patients who receive the second al TKI, 22, and the patients who move it to systemic chemotherapy, or patients, and there are these patients, 13, who despite uh, any kind of treatment, they progress very quickly and they die very early. This is the survival curves that show how either in the, the group of uh, second ALK TKI and ALK TKI beyond progression, survival is very similar. So this is, is in favor of the strategy that we use today. First crizotinib, then the second crizotinib progression. And you see how there is a group of patients that anyway, they go very badly if, because they do not respond to anything. All this drug, they are acting also in the mutation of the ML4 ALK that as uh, the previous speaker said, is very unstable. And uh, we know that we can continue treatment beyond progression if there is a clinical evidence of benefit. This has been published in Annals of Oncology. And this is mainly when there is isolated progression in the brain that is very common in this setting of patients. We can continue the systemic treatment at the moment with crizotinib, just adding stereotactic radiotherapy. Well, this is an algorithm that is possible to evaluate in the next future. You start with ALK TKI. In case of progression, you rebiopsy and you can customize the treatment on the basis of the mutation that occurs at the rebiopsy. Or, you, or uh, that you can find also with the liquid biopsy. This is the, these are the old the drugs that are on uh, study in this moment. And you see that uh, with this, this uh, apparently limited number of patients, we have a very, very large number of trials and drugs that are on the field. One of the important questions is that uh, the toxicity of these agents may be in some way the difference. Crizotinib has a very good toxicity profile. The toxicity adverse events are very mild, and uh, uh, the most important uh, side effects are transient vision disorder, and the most uh, uh, worrisome side effect are gastrointestinal with nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, but very seldom of the grade three. This is not true for the other agents that are a little more uh, um, heavy in the treatment, mainly because of the gastrointestinal side effects. Well, 
one important uh, side effect that we have to know with crizotinib is that in men, they have uh, the capacity of lowering the androgen concentration. They, they cause androgen deficiency, and this is a cause of uh, reduction of uh, sexual function in men, and uh, this need to be evaluated, and uh, this could be easily uh, determined by the androgen uh, evaluation in the blood. Well, one of the most important uh, uh, experience in patients treated with uh, ALK uh, translocation is the development of brain metastasis. Brain metastasis is a common event in all the target therapy, also in AGFR mutated patients. This is our experience in Perugia. We got in the ALK treated patients any time the incidence of brain metastasis approaching 38%, 38% in AGFR mutated patients, and 18% in ALK AGFR negative patients in a group that we selected on the basis of no exposition or very low exposition to smoking habits in order to have an homogeneous population. You see that the incidence may be because of prolonged survival is quite a double in the target therapy agents in the target population. This doesn't seem to be an important topic for survival because median survival in Hulk translocated patients in this population is exceeding 70 months, in a GFR is exceeding 50 months, it is much lower in patients without target, uh, any target, in patients wild type. So brain metastasis is common, but is not a dramatic event, can be managed in many, many ways, combining radiotherapy with systemic target therapy. Uh, Crizotinib has a limitation because of its poor penetration in uh, uh, the brain that we have shown in a, a journal, uh, Thoracic Oncology, and uh, the response rate, uh, the control, is uh, poor, 18% and 33% in treated brain metastasis. And the intracranial failure accounts for 70% of uh, progression disease in this patient population. All the new drugs, apparently, they have higher activity higher overall response and control in the brain, approaching 50% of the response and over. And uh, this is the uh, trial that we are performing now, Dashen 7. This is a worldwide trial in which seritinib is uh, given in all the patients with uh, brain metastasis independently of the line of treatment. Uh, we have evidence that alectinib, because of his characteristic and his pharmacokinetics, can be a potential useful drug for treating brain metastasis. And this is the pooled analysis of CNS treated patients with alectinib. Here you see some response that are clearly evident during the treatment of alectinib. And this is the forest plot of the, uh, the waterfall plot of the electric response, regardless prior radiation. You see that the major of the patients got response to electinib. This is a major advance in the treatment of this disease. And uh, with a 60% of overall response and a com comprehensive 19% of disease control in brain metastasis. Here there are some examples of response after a few weeks of alectinib treatment in two different patients, and again, the same experience. And uh, the last part of my talk is due to the new compound that is developed, that is the uh, loratinib, that in advanced small cell lung cancer with ALK translocation. This data has been recently presented. You see that uh, you have an important response rate 
despite the fact that uh, these patients were pretreated or non pretreated. And uh, this is uh, particularly true either for ALK patients and uh, in ROS resistant patients. So the lornatinib seems to have very good activity in refractory patients. And uh, you can see some very good response in the liver and also in the brain. In the brain, you have uh, an important response rate, either in patients pretreated and non pretreated with crizotinib. And this is some very important data that show activity in leptomeningeal carcinomatosis. That is a very difficult issue that some, sometimes occurred in these patients because of the importance of uh, prolonged survival can give this uh, uh, possibility of developing metastasis in leptomeningeal sites. In conclusion, we have now the possibility of uh, evaluate the role of crizotinib in adjuvant setting. Today, without clinical trials, we don't have any evidence for use of these patients in this setting. There is a United States trial that will clarify this issue. But uh, we know that uh, uh, the toxicity of crizotinib is critical to evaluate some side effect that is of particular interest. Crizotinib is active in ROS1 patients, and it seems to be more active in ROS1 patients with ALK1. And uh, uh, today, the strategy is to combine upfront crizotinib in first line and then to use all the other. Uh, second line or uh, active ALK inhibitors, more powerful but active also after crizotinib progression. Having said that, I want to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you.